<clears throat> okay. Um, welcome everyone who's here, everyone on Zoom. Uh, I'm going to call to order the April 2021 meeting of the Homewood Planning Commission. If we could start with a roll call, please. <coughs> Mr. Roberts? Here. Mr. Conteras? My understanding is joining us. For Fred, the turn on your mic. John is online, but turn on your he mic is, he so he can hear you. Ms. Andrus? Here. Mr. Broadhead? Here. Mr. Armstead? Here. Mr. Respinto? Here. Mr. Harwell? Here. Ms. Wilcock? Here. Mr. Wilson? Here. Okay, next item of business would be um, the recommendations of the nominating committee. Um, I was appointed last month as chairman pro tem, uh, but we need to elect a new slate of officers, a, a chairperson and a vice chairperson. Um, and last month I appointed Brady Wilson to lead our nominating committee. Uh, does the nominating committee have any recommendations for chair and vice chair? We do. We unanimously recommend Mr. Roberts as chair and the uh, vote was split on vice chair with the nod going to me. What's the recommendation for vice chair is me. Okay, um, so in, in terms of who the other nominees were? Ms. Wilcutt okay. the other. Nominee. Okay, so um, today, do we still have a nomination for Ms. Wilcutt? Is there from the floor? I, I think the, the committee makes a recommendation and that if there are any other nominations from the floor, we could accept those now. Okay, um, Fred, just, just so I, uh, the nominating committee had a recommendation or a nomination for Ms. Wilcott, um, but I, I don't hear that from the floor. As of right now, the only nomination I hear is for Brady. If I understand, Mr. Wilson, the nominating committee has recommended a slate of officers, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Armstead, Mr. Wilson, and Mr. Wilson. It was, it was a two to one. So the recommendation was for me with a vote for Ms. Wilcott. The committee's recommendation was to go to Mr. Stewart, Mr. Stewart. So, if we, that is the recommendation of the Wood Plan Commission. What needs to be done, is there a nomination from the board for the position of either chairman or vice chairman? I would m move to uh, nominate Mr. Roberts for chairman. Second. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to clarify. Okay. No, we have a recommendation for the nomination. All right, that, that's I'm sorry. I think what, let me rescind that and what? and move to accept the non nomination committee's recommendations. Okay. All right. And then there's a second for that. But that's, that's what I'm trying to say is having we have the recommendation. Fred, Fred, can you turn your mic off, please? I thought so. Sorry. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, we have a motion and a second to accept the recommendations of the nominating committee. All right, so yes, let's go ahead and vote on that recommendation then. Right, so we'll, uh, all in favor of that recommendation, it's a recommendation. Uh, Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, now, having accepted that recommendation, are there any nominations from the floor for either chairman or vice chairman? So are there any nominations? At which point, if there were, we will vote individually on those nominees. Right, any other nominations for the positions of vice chairman or chairman? All right. Having had no other nominations, uh, we'll again vote on the recommendations for the both positions at the same time, vice chairman and chairman as recommended by the nominating committee. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, by acclamation, uh, Mr. Roberts is the chairman and Mr. Wilson is the vice chairman for the remainder until the September meeting, as we noted, at which time the Planning Commission will conduct its normal annual uh, election of officers. So congratulations. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Yeah, hopefully no more votes until September. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, next item, uh, Fred circulated uh, the March minutes. Uh, as I looked at them and they look good to me. Does anyone else have any comments on them uh, before we have a motion to approve them? Okay, I will entertain a motion to approve the March 2021 minutes. Second. Okay, I, I didn't hear, was it Ms. Andrus? Oh, down there. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, yes, um, so we had a um, motion, it wasn't from, Bray, uh, from Mr. Wilson. It was second. Okay. I moved. Uh, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, I got it. Okay, um, so um, I'll call, I guess, call for a vote then. All in favor of uh, approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. All right, those are approved. Um, so communications from the, the chair and vice chair, considering we're elected about 12 seconds ago. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any, but do you have any, Mr. Wilson? I have none. Okay. All right, so we have no old business from last month, so we'll move to uh, new business for this month. The first case is RS. Mr. I think Mr. Chairman. Conters. Yeah, his is, service is going. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. Do I say that I was present? Yeah, Mr. Conters, I'm afraid we're not able to hear you. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't know. I may have missed it, but I didn't hear my name, so I can say that I'm present. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Conteris, I think we have you marked as present. Thank you. Okay, so the first case is RS 21 04 01 relating to, okay, relating to 260 Oxmoor Road. Uh, the applicant is um, Tesla Payne. Um, if you would come forward and tell us about your case. And this, uh, actually, the first two cases. Uh, RS 210401 and RZ 210402. One is uh, a, a new survey, a resurvey. One is a rezone. If you could present those at the same time, and then we will vote on those separately. Absolutely. Um, thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Chesley Payne with Matthew Steps for Nichols. I'm representing the owners of the property located at 260 Oxmoor Road. Uh, Mr. Um, Payne, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Could you state your address for the record as well? Yes. Um, the address is 260 Oxmoor Road. Yeah, okay. Your, your, your personal address, I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize. My personal address is 220 Pats Way, Springville, Alabama, 35146. Okay, thank you. Now go ahead and proceed. Sorry. Certainly. Okay. Um, before the Planning Commission tonight, we have filed two applications. The first is for the rezoning of a portion of the property and a subdivision of that property. Um, the current use of the property is essentially an empty former hotel that the owners um, are looking to, number one, demo, and then replace with two separate new developments on the two new parcels if approved by this commission. Um, the first intended use on lot 5A, as shown um, in the packet that was presented with the application, um, is a 91,400 plus or minus square foot class A climate controlled storage facility. The idea behind it is probably something familiar to if you've seen these facilities in other um, uh, metro areas such as Nashville, Atlanta. Um, in this case, the exterior, as you can see from the renderings, is modeled after something akin to an office building or hotel on this. Um, it, it will be far more aesthetically pleasing than what is currently on the property. And um, what we think will be a positive addition to the area itself. Uh, the building is going to have is um, sometimes when people think of these storage facilities, they get a negative connotation. In this case, however, this is not going to be um, a, a mini storage or something of that nature. There is going to be um, controlled access to the facility for the employees in those renting space. Um, there are going to be limited hours of access to this facility. There, the exterior is going to be extensively well lighted, and that is so that everyone um, who comes and goes from this location can have a sense of security. 
and the owners intend to install cameras both on the exterior and interior of the building in this case. Um, the reasons why we're asking for the zoning change on that lot 5A is first of all, the current zoning um, does not allow for the highest and best use of the property. Um, the owners have looked at a variety of uses for this property, including maybe um, redoing the hotel idea here, but in the current economic climate, COVID, et cetera, travel and anything related with travel is not a smart economic bet at this point. Um, there's also um, too much competition in the area. And it also comes down to that according to the owners, um, their own research, Homewood has no true class A climate controlled storage facility itself at this point. There are some class B and C as they refer to type structures, but there's nothing that puts the emphasis on number one, making the exterior as aesthetically pleasing as um, this will be and the focus on creating a secure environment around the building as well. Um, obviously, um, the way they are treating this is if the subdivision and the rezoning is approved, it's, more, it's sort of a two-phase approach. The first phase is going to be demoing the old building that it currently, as it currently exists, replacing it with the climate control storage building. And then on the front, or as I call it the front, on lot 5B, there is a plan at this point to put there some form of retail restaurant space there. The idea is to attract something unique to the Birmingham area. They have been in talks with several potential tenants, both from a facility lease and or ground lease aspect. But the idea behind this, it really requires, their, the redevelopment idea really requires both of these parcels to have to be subdivided and have the proper zoning to make this work from an economic standpoint. Um, I know the owners have themselves gone out and tried to um, obtain, you know, public feedback towards what would work well in this case. And this seems to fit with what they have been told that people in the area, they're looking for something that will change the environment in this area. In other words, provide something that um, both looks better and provides something that otherwise has not been in the immediate vicinity of this. Um, as far as this goes, they plan on moving pretty fast if they are able to get approval on this project. What we're probably looking at is um, after approval, demo will probably start within one or two months. Probably looking at the demo work to take approximately five to six months. Uh, tr I try, I ask people to try not to hold me to construction timelines too closely if they can, but that is the general idea with the construction to begin two to three months after the completion of the demo work. Um, at this point that I think what everybody's in agreement on, and especially the owners, is that the current structure is not doing anyone any good in its current um, placement and current condition. And the two-phase process that we're trying to pursue there will ensure that property values um, will be greatly enhanced both for themselves and surrounding property owners. And the aesthetics of it will cause the area to look very different after this. Um, it should also, what their hope is at the end of the day, that this plants a seed in this area that can maybe, you know, um, start a trend in the area of other owners looking at their properties and realizing that there may be a way you know, to improve on what is currently there at this point. Okay, thank you. I think the board members in a few minutes will have some, or commission members rather, will have some questions. But uh, for now, we're going to open up the public portion uh, of this case. Um, we have a group of people here, and we have a pretty good crowd on Zoom. Um, let's start with the people here. Anyone who wants to speak to the case here will go first. After that, we will go to Zoom. Um, if you could, if you're on Zoom, um, I don't know if you have the ability to raise your hand or, or, or just maybe speak up once we get to that point, uh, and, and Brian will identify you and we'll, we'll call on you as we get started. Um, but for now, let's start with the people who are present. If you come, once you come up to the, to the podium, uh, give your name, address, and if we could try to keep, limit uh, comment to about three minutes, that would be, uh, that would be very helpful. So. My name is Michael Eady. I live at 133 Gillen Drive. 
Uh, I'm a Homewood, West Homewood resident. Uh, I'm actually a now own two different businesses in Homewood over the last six months. Um, so I'm coming to you as both a resident and a business owner in Homewood and specifically a business owner in West Homewood. One of which has 15 different families from West Homewood that have invested in that business. And I'm here to speak on behalf of all 15 of those business owners. I've also spoken to the business owners of Seeds, Nexus Fitness, and Ash West Homewood as well. And they've all given me permission to speak on their behalf. We see absolutely no negative to a redevelopment of this property into a climate controlled storage. In fact, at the end of the day, it's very clear to us. There are simply two options on the table. We have an abandoned hotel that has been there for almost a decade. As a resident, we're sick and tired of looking at it or we have a redeveloped climate controlled storage unit that may not be the perfect option in many people's eyes, but it is certainly progress and it is moving West Homewood forward in our redevelopment efforts. And at the end of the day, there's also the opportunity for additional retail development and other things to come into our neighborhood. And so for me, it is a simple, easy answer. And I understand that there are rules and things and regulations in place, but at the end of the day, I would ask as a resident and a business owner to simply apply common sense and look at this in a very simple way. Block out the fear and the negative things and the negative voices that are out there and the things that have happened in the past. It's time to move forward and the opportunity is there and it is a climate controlled storage or it is an abandoned hotel. And so I would ask as a resident and speaking on behalf of some of the other business owners in West Homewood that we move forward with this, push it to city council and allow those folks to hopefully apply common sense as well so we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Stephen Norris, uh, property owner at 201 Vulcan Road. Uh, we're actually a neighbor property to this uh, hotel. Um, we moved into that building, bought it about two years ago, and have renovated it extensively on the outside and inside. Um, knew that we were you know, part of some change there and have looked at that building every day that we come in and out. Um, we've talked with the Patels quite a bit and they've stayed in touch with us. Um, I, I believe that they're sincere in their desire to want to add to the community. Um, I'm not a community planner. I, I can't tell you the future that it is gonna be the best thing for the area. Um, but I do know that we have hundreds of thousands of vacant square feet in a very close area to us. Um, we have the federal building, we have the old Sears there, we have this hotel. Um, the idea of having money invested into the property uh, appeals to me. Um, I, and again, I think they're sincere in trying to find something that works both as a business owner as well as helping the community. So that's, uh, we're in favor of it if they're held to what they're proposing they would do. Thank you, Mr. Norris. Good evening, Commissioners. Matt Rich, 239, Fairlane Drive, Homewood, Alabama. Uh, so West Homewood resident um, as well. One of those that goes out of Oxmoor and sees this eyesore every day. I come to you tonight as a person that was uh, quite hesitant of what the Patels were, were selling. Uh, the recent um, week we had a meeting of West Homewood residents at Nexus Fitness, I uh, went there uh, frankly, as a, as a resident that wanted to say, I, I don't think this will be a good thing for us. I heard storage facility, and immediately I had a visceral reaction of just, that's just gonna be awful. Y you made the wrong decision. Having spoken with the Patels and took some time to talk with them, uh, I had to, as uh, the old saying goes, would eat crow. Uh, after speaking with them, it is going to be a facility that we can be proud of when we see it. Certainly, it's gonna be better than what we see now. Quite frankly, I would go out there myself with a sledgehammer and help them tear it down um, if it would help. Um, but I can see their vision. After speaking with them, I do think they have best intent for our neighborhood. Um, certainly, it has been a long time coming. That thing's been there for quite some time. So it would be nice to see something positive move into that space uh, and then positive moving forward. Uh, so even though I was extremely hesitant, didn't believe I would be up here speaking for it, uh, probably two weeks ago after speaking with them and, and asking many questions and, and seeing really where their, uh, where their hearts for the neighborhood are. I uh, come to you tonight as a person that's positive uh, and I think it will be a positive addition to the neighborhood. 
thank you very much for listening tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Eric Gibson. I live at 301 Huntington Park Road. Uh, I also would be in favor of this. My daughter goes to Hall Kent and I come down after dropping her off and I stare at that building every morning, turning to get on I-65. Um, I don't see anything good from it being there in its current state. Uh, I think there is a better than decent chance that it could spark some much needed growth and development in that area and I would be in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Lauren Adair to Lauren Adair 252 Allen Avenue. I come to y'all just to let you know that this is a positive a big positive for our community. They don't have to invest all of this money that they're willing to invest. And I too met um, with them and you can just see how positive they wanna be. We definitely don't want another hotel in the neighborhood. Um, we can admit they are all eyesores and that we want to rid them of that whole area. So I think them going this way is a very big positive for us in the community as a homeowner. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else present want to speak to this case before we go to the uh, to Zoom? Okay, it appears we're uh, finished with the, the crowd that's here. Um, do we have anyone on Zoom uh, who's ready to speak to this case? If you are online and you would like to speak, you can unmute. If a couple of you mute, unmute at the same time, just be respectful of each other. But you can unmute at this time and go ahead and speak. Hello, I'm Harold Shader with Shader Realty. Um, I'm opposed to the development and the change of zoning. Uh, I think uh, we've got plenty of storage units in the area. There's better suited locations for a storage unit. I understand everybody wants to get rid of the eyesore, but I think uh, we've been waiting for this redevelopment for 11 years now, and I don't think we need to change the zoning. The GERD zoning was intent is, is as it outlined to improve. I don't think this is an improvement. Of course, it improves it based on it's a new, new facility, but this was storage facility could be put in any other location, not, not at the gateway of, of Homewood. Um, we're talking about changing a zoning, a spot zoning. I don't think that's right. Uh, if you're gonna rezone the area, rezone all the area to, to uh, B, B2 or B4. Um, so uh, I think that uh, it's a great location for a lot of uses. I don't think a storage unit is the proper use for our community. Uh, I know we want a beautiful thing, but I think a three-story structure of this nature right here at the gateway of our community is the wrong decision. We need to think about other uses. A brand new hotel would be great with, with restaurants or three different restaurants. Uh, but to put a storage unit on this prime piece of pro property is the wrong way to go. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm Harold Shaders, uh, 197 Vulcan Road, and that's 35209. My home address is 1909 Indian Lake Drive. Birmingham, Alabama, three, five, two, four, four. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? As Brian said a moment ago, if you, uh, if you want to speak, just unmute your microphone and, and start.
Okay, with that, we will close the public portion of this, uh, this case. Uh, Mr. Payne, if you would come back up and we have some questions for you. And I'll start just by have, asking you to explain a little bit what you're mechanically trying to do here both in, in both cases, both with regard to the resurvey and, and the uh, rezoning request. Um, with mechanically, and let's um, make sure I understand the question properly, it's um, the attempt is to create, um, subdivide the property into two separate lots. Um, of course, um, as stated, lot 5A will be the um, storage facility building. That will be the bulk of the property there. And lot 5A will be the retail slash restaurant development area on that. Um, I think there is a proposed um, subdivision plat that was put in with the application on that for your review um, on that. But the idea, and I guess the way this will probably work is um, we would ask that the subdivision application be considered first, obviously. And if approved, then we would ask that the rezoning of the storage facility lot then be um, approved. Um, it's the way we would ask that to flow. Um, <clears throat> as far as, as we can see, we have the same type of zoning directly across Vulcan Road um, from, from the current, from this um, property at this point. And what we're trying to do is create a property that is both revenue generating and at the same time, um, I think as one of the public comments stated, presents a better face um, than what currently sits there. Um, if I'm able to provide this to you, what I'd like to do is provide you with, more than anything, I think it just shows what their inspiration is for the retail and restaurant development. Um, obviously, these are ideas they have taken from other localities, other places. Um, in other words, I'm not a marketing person, but they want to make um, a pretty big splash, especially with a retail restaurant. They want it to be some place that people from Homewood and outside Homewood would want to come to. Um, not only for their benefit, but also for the benefit of the city. Um, uh, the owners have expressed to me several times that something like this is needed in the area. Um, not only, obviously, to correct the issues with their own property, but also as to maybe provide a more conducive environment to um, other property owners that will, you know, sort of lead them to the same belief that they have reached, which is there's real potential here and we need to unlock that potential and allow this property to be developed in a way that will lead to other sort of following suit afterwards. I've got a couple of questions if you don't mind. Sorry. Um, so I'm gonna run through them if you don't mind. Um, the, I'm a little confused, but I'm not sure I have quite, may have, I've misunderstood other uh, points that have been made. Will the current owners retain ownership of both the retail and the storage facility. That is correct. Okay, so they will build and they will then lease. The they spaces. will build. That or is will, correct. Or they will they operate? They will build and operate the storage facility. Um, they will build and more than likely lease out <coughs> the operations of the retail restaurant facility to their tenants. But they'll retain ownership of that. That is correct. Okay. I'm, Go ahead. I'm, Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, just one second. Hey, sir. Sorry, my name is Ash Patel, and what you guys are looking at is a revised site plan for which it's not on the initial packet that everybody got. So, this is the retail portion is after we spoke to a lot of the residents in the neighborhood, um, and we got feedback that people want to see a sports bar, people want excite, excitement. I mean, back in the day, people were like jitterbugs, and we're like, well, we can't bring back jitterbugs, but you know, at least we have something that will spark interest. And our our vision is and our goal is to bring in a sports bar that's not currently in the Birmingham metro area. Uh, we want, because there's a lot of sports bars out there with, I mean, it's, it's a, nothing against the ones that are in the, in the Birmingham area, but we want something that people will drive from other cities that will come here and that they can, they can, if you get like a Buffalo Wild Wings, there's Buffalo Wild Wings everywhere. Nothing against it, but you know, that's our goal. And we're actually in current talks with Jonathan's Grill and Miller's Ale House. Um, you know, obviously it's based on the rezoning, but 
Um, those are the that's the vision that we have. Um, you know, some people say, well, that's a little that's a little extreme. That's a little high vision. Well, it's like you know, we have a great piece of land and we want to do something and leave a legacy on this property to do something special. And we've heard the voices in the neighborhood. And um, I did want to make a one point, uh, something um, in respect uh, that somebody had said on the Zoom call was about wanting they wanted to see a hotel there. Post COVID world, that entire market has changed. Um, it's just not a feasible type of business that makes sense. I think people want to see change. Um, yeah, you want to see a high-end hotel there, but you got all your high-end hotels on the next exit, you know? So, and we understand that in order for the us to be able to put the stores there, we can use, because it's very low impact on traffic, you don't need a lot of parking, and we can use the entire front portion, that, the GER that we're wanting to keep to do retail, sports bar in that corner piece, um, something that, the neighborhood can actually interact with the property because if it's a hotel, you know it's very unlikely that most of the people will ever want to stay there. So and you do anticipate multiple bays. It's not just going to be one big restaurant. No, no, it's going to be a retail. It's going to be a sports bar and then a retail strip. Okay. Obviously, it's built to suit based on what kind of tenant that we get. Uh, an example purposes like a Panera Bread, if they want to end cap, then they pretty much dictate how they want to be and where they want to be located, and then you have to build around them because okay. that's just the way it goes. But um, Before I pass the baton to somebody else, I'm going to switch to the storage then. Um, you mentioned class A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. How are those defined differently? Yeah. How to differentiate them? Absolutely. And um, I did, I think your, one of your questions was something about, um, we just want to own the asset. This is A? Is what we're saying? Is this class A? It's on the back end. Storage, and then this is like obviously mind control. Right. And then go to the property. If you look at our rendering, like obviously this is a class C property. Okay, that's not obvious. That's what I was asking. Thank you. <laughs> these are class A, other class A facilities throughout the state. And you've got these in Georgia and Tennessee. So your intent is to have one door that you walk in? It's, it's that's, that's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah, the loading dock is in the rear of mm -hmm. uh, Vulcan Road. Uh, you won't even be able to see the loading dock. You won't see 18 wheelers unloading and all that. Uh, leasing office is back there as well. Yep. Okay. Um, which, which was part of the questions and discussion we had in the work meeting was the the rendering and the final product being similar. Yes. Um, your your uh, is there any outdoor storage that you intend? No. Trucks, no. equipment, fully climate boats, controlled. Boats. Nothing outside. Fully so climate controlled. Good. Yep. Good to know. Um, and then, uh, Fred, this might be a question for you. When, when we talk about uh, intending to have cameras, is that the same as proffering and we're saying we absolutely will have cameras for securities that would be in place that we'd be interested in hearing about? Yeah. Well, you'll feel that. Way. Uh, and I guess my question is, would you proffer that you will have security cameras well, we, in place? Yeah. We, uh, we're having a management company run it, and it's required. And it's obviously something we want to protect our asset. The cameras inside and out, the only thing that the cameras inside the building cannot do is have visual of anybody's particular unit. Mm -hmm. it, can't, it just can't have any inside <clears throat> view of it. But all hallways. And another security feature that I want to mention about the storage facility is, let's say you have a unit on the third floor and you want to go to the second floor because one of your friends has a unit you can't get into that you can't get off the elevator into the second floor you have to have a key your code will only let you get to the floor that you're on same thing with the stairwell if you decide you were on third floor and you want to go down the stairwell you have to take you to the bottom you can't get to the second floor you can't even go to the first floor because there's another door on the first floor that you have to put your key code in to be able to access that's great i'm finished thank you guys mr chairman Um, I wanted to ask, how will we know that this property is going to look like this? I mean, I think this is a nice rendering. Absolutely. And, and, and um, I have some heartburn over, you know, considering rezoning away from GERD. I know, you know, city councils many terms ago put a lot of work into putting GERD into place. How do I know this property is going to look like this? Yep. Storage will look like depicted. Retail is conceptual. It will change based on what type of tenant that we get. But storage will look like that. Well, you will have to go, the signs, you have, 
the signs will have to go to council for uh, a sign variance there's the, in the number of signs but the actual facility yes you know i want to know it's going to look like this mm -hmm. yep if, if anything we might just add stone to the side about 12 feet high on the side just to give it some give it some accent um, that we're gonna we're gonna go take some options and look at that but as majority yes that'll look like that but we'll add be, we'll be adding some stone or something similar to that to the side to give it some some flavor and if you look at the packet I think that he brought up on the in, in the last three pages those are examples of other facilities in different areas that have um, type of stone that we were looking to you know we'd be concerned about people doing and again majority of, there's an example over here and I'll show it to you guys um, <coughs> you know this is in Atlanta uh, marketplace at Terra Mill if you see the facility that's getting built there you can't even tell it's a storage facility it looks like an apartment complex and that's that's the main goal here is to not make it look like one and because we know people when they see it they're just thinking like oh storage but hey, we want people to say wow this looks great what is that and then oh it's self storage so but again that's um, that's the that's the goal I reckon my understanding is we're recommending body for this request. We are correct. Is there anything, I think they've done a great job of explaining what they're intended to do, what is their proposal to do. Is there a way that we could add something to our recommendation that would incorporate that they, that we're, if we decide to vote to recommend doing this, we're only doing so if they build it based off these designs and this aesthetic. Yeah. Is there a way to do that? Recommendation could include reference to the fact that it would be built substantially in, <clears throat> in accord with the renderings that were submitted as part of the case packet. Right. Whoever makes That's the initial motion would, would add that um, add that on. So. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I do want to address the comment that Mr. Shea made. Mr. Shea, if I say his name right, um, this property is surrounded by C3 and uh, so it, it is not it's, it's on the edge of the GERD and so this is not a spot zoning situation I did just want to clarify that yeah it's not so right. it is surrounded by C3 <coughs> and C5 for that matter it's adjacent to C5 so I do want to mention that Okay, Fred, I think we discussed this earlier, but you know, for the people who are worried about building a hotel, if you rezone to C5, a hotel is a permitted use in either GERD or, or uh, C5, correct? Yes. So. Right. Correct. And the only purpose for rezoning to C5 would be to allow this type of facility that you've described, the, the, right. the Class A storage facility. In, in our interpretation of the zoning ordinance, anyway, it states if, we, so if the subdivision of the property is allowed to proceed, there's not going to be enough space for parking for a hotel on either line at that point. So we will have inevitably, you know, set our course towards building what's been proposed here. Okay. And one last question, Fred. Um, you, am I correct that the, if subdivided, both both new subdivisions or sub, the, new, the new GERD and the new uh, C5 lots would both meet the requirements for those types of, for that type of zoning? Yeah, yeah. The size lots would right, right. be sufficient to come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Based on, you know, I don't know about the retail, but yeah. At least the minimum lot size, the minimum uh, road frontage. Okay. Uh, one thing that did not get brought up, but we did want to mention, sorry, uh, was that we will also be maintaining uh, all the buffers as well. Just wanted to throw that out there. All the buffer strips and everything will be maintaining. Do we have any more questions from the commission? 
If not, I would uh, entertain a motion uh, to approve. We'll, we'll let me back up. We're going to, as I mentioned earlier, we'll vote on these individually. And I think you requested this as well. <coughs> the the first vote would be, or if if there's a motion, would be on the resurvey um, and splitting this into two different lots. Uh, so I would um, entertain a motion uh, to approve case RS 21-04-01. The, the resurvey portion. Motion right. to approve RS 21-04-01. Second. Okay. Um, Mr. Wilson moved and Sandris seconded. All right. Ms. Andrus? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Armstead? Yes. Mr. Respento? Uh, yes. Yes. Mr. Harwell? Yes. Ms. Wilcott? Yes. Mr. Cronteras? Yes. All right, thank you. And Mr. Broadhead? Yes. And lastly, Mr. Roberts? Yes. So your resurvey passes. Um, and I would also entertain a case, to, uh, I'm sorry, a motion to approve RZ 210402 uh, with further recommendation uh, that any any facility built storage facility would be in substantial compliance with the drawings that have been provided in the packet um, that you provided us. I'll make a motion to approve RZ 21-04-02 as stated by Mr. Roberts and including the uh, requirement by contract for your uh, security cameras. I'll second that. Okay, motion by Mr. Wilson, second by Mr. Respinta. Respinta, all right, okay. <clears throat> all right. Ms. Andrus? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Armstead? Yes. Mr. Respento? Yes. Mr. Harwell? Yes. Ms. Wilcott? Yes. Mr. Cronteras? Yes. Mr. Broadhead? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. So um, that will be a favorable 9-0 recommendation uh, to the City Council with the stipulations <coughs> we mentioned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Um, so our next uh, our next two cases are also related. Um, they are case number RS twenty one zero four zero three, a request for resurvey uh, for two third. I'm sorry, three sixteen and three twenty Stared Avenue, and also case RZ twenty one. 04-04, which is a rezone request for those same two addresses on Starrett Avenue. Um, the applicant is Ronald Van Erv. Um, Mr. Van Erv, are you here to, here to present? Yeah. And uh, while you're walking up, if, would you get up to state your name and your, uh, your address, please? Yeah, good evening. Ronald Van Erv, 316 Starrett Avenue, Homewood. All right, um, Mr. Fenner, what are you asking us to do? What, what, is your, what is your case? Just very simple. All we're doing is uh, my neighbor, you know, Charles Williams, we're swapping two little pieces of property, one from the, between our two driveways. He's going to acquire basically about a foot of the property from me. Then on the backside strip, then I'm going to do the same, acquire about a foot of the property from him that puts a dividing wall onto my property. That's it. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Van Erv. Um, we'll have, we might have some questions for you in a moment with the commission, yep. but for now we're gonna open this up to the public to speak on this case. All right, thanks. So, thank you. So if, uh, we'll do this the same way we did before. Um, if well, first anyone present who wants to speak on this case can come up, uh, hope you limit your co comments to three minutes, give your name, your address as, as, the, uh, as people did before, and then we'll go to Zoom. Um, so let's start first with people who are present. My name is Jim Dodds. I'm at 429 Berry Avenue. My wife and I, Julia, have lived at this address for 38 years this, this month. When we moved here <clears throat> to that house in 1983, 316 Sterrett was not there. It was a large tract of land 
owned by a family in Homewood that had a large house and a smaller house on Sterrett, and the rest was woods. In 1985, there was a hearing to rezone that property to construct 30 homes on five acres of land. And that is when they included 316 Sterrett as well as 312 Sterrett in that property. And we were told at that time those two houses would not impact Berry Avenue. <clears throat> uh, the original owner, Ed Doss, he built a pool after obtaining additional land where there was a vacant uh, right of way of the city. He built it with a high fence and he told us his pool would not impact Berry Avenue. Now when I read this notice here of this hearing, it really doesn't say much. It's very vague. But the thing that really sticks out to me is a memo from Jerry O'Peary, a surveyor, who did a resurvey, and the purpose was to make an ex existing fence, the revised property line, allowing use of a pool deck up to said fence and to create an exclusive ingress, egress uh, easement for the use of lot two, <coughs> allowing access to Berry Avenue, an existing public street. That's why I submitted an email to Mr. Goodwin yesterday with opposition to the re reasons for this, along with si signatures from 28 adults that live on our street. There were only two that I did not get because I could not reach them. So that's 93% of the adults living on our street. I feel like there's a safety issue. We have over 20 children on this street. And allowing access to Berry Avenue is going to increase the chance for more vehicular traffic on this dead end street and increase the danger to our children. Also, if there's access to Berry Avenue from that pool deck, there's a safety issue there of the potential of a child to drown. There's also a space issue. Berry Avenue is not as wide as most residential streets in Homewood. Also, that circle is not wide enough for a fire truck to even come down and turn around. In fact, when they do come, they know they have to back down into Berry Avenue to be able to get out. So that is another issue with this, this street. And finally, the quality of life issue. If, you have, if 316 Sterrett Avenue has access to Berry Avenue and it was to dispose of garbage trash, um, that is gonna be an issue for us because Berry Avenue is not an alley. It's our front space. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else present here tonight? Okay. Good evening. Uh, Robin Beasley, 401 Berry Avenue. I will echo my neighbor's uh, comments. Uh, we don't completely understand what the intent is behind the request for the resurvey and the rezoning, uh, but there are 18 homes and 18 families on Berry Avenue who are diametrically opposed to a resurvey or a rezoning that results in permanent ingress and egress off that cul-de-sac at the end of Berry Avenue. Um, like, like Jim said, Berry Avenue is not an alley. It shouldn't be allowed to be treated as such. It's not a parking lot. It's where the kids on Berry Avenue shoot basketball and ride their bikes. So anything that would result in more traffic or permanent ingress and egress off that cul-de-sac to 316 or 320, stare it, is something we absolutely oppose. Thank you. Thank you. Clyde Walker, I live at 433 Berry Avenue. I, my property is adjacent to the property we're talking about. It's the closest one with cul-de-sac. Uh, I agree with everything that Jim said. He laid it out pretty well. Uh, I think that everybody on that street is in agreement. Everybody on Berry Avenue, just, just understanding that it, whatever decision you guys make is going to affect, and we will live with whatever decision you make on Berry Avenue. But every, every resident, every homeowner is opposing it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, 
Okay, anyone else in, uh, present in the audience want to speak to this case? Okay, there being none, let's uh, go to Zoom. Anyone on Zoom, if, if you want to speak to this case, uh, I see a couple of hands raised. Let's, let's go to the um, two people with the hands raised and then we'll go to the unmute, unmuting uh, method. But uh, I can't see the names, Brian, if you don't mind just picking one and we'll go. So Justin, you uh, put your hand up first if you'd like to go ahead and unmute and talk. Hey, good evening, everyone. I am Justin Grammer. I am the resident at 425 Berry Avenue, I'm currently constructing a home. I'd like to echo, echo what Mr. Clyde, Mr. Jim, and uh, Mr. Beasley have spoken. Our biggest concern is egress, ingress, as well as occupant load and vehicular load on Berry Avenue. And so uh, I would like some more explanation and some clarification. And ultimately, just don't want that to be <clears throat> any additional loading on the street. So I would like for you guys to take that into consideration when you make the decision. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, Emily. Good evening. My name is Emily Falk Libby. Um, I am 428 Berry Avenue. Our house basically overlooks right there um, the, the back of the fence of the pool. Um, and I just want to echo what my neighbors have said. Um, we are very opposed to anything that might create an opening um, access to Berry <coughs> Avenue. Um, particularly on the safety level, we have a two-year-old. Anything that might create an open access to the pool, even you know, mistakenly if the door is left open, um, and even more traffic, um, and all the other reasons that my neighbors have um, mentioned. So thank you very much. <coughs> Anyone else on Zoom wish to speak to this case? Okay, I, I don't, unless, unless you pick <coughs> someone else. Is Mr. someone Williams, trying to speak? Are you trying to speak, Mr. Williams? No. Oh, yeah. <coughs> All right, I'm in trouble with mute. My name's Charles Williams. I'm at 320 Starrett Avenue. Um, <coughs> and um, uh, I'm, there, I'm not sure if there's some misunderstanding about this ingress egress but I when I when I was talking to, to Ron Van Erb about uh, doing this resurvey what we were trying to do was he wanted to get the uh, some there's a wall between his where his pool is in my back lot backyard he wanted to get uh, it's about I think two or three feet uh, over to the wall that was my property and I said fine I never use it it's back there on the other side of the fence it's it's where your deck is for your swimming pool and um, but there's a, a section that is about I'm thinking 12 13 14 feet where his fence ends at the north part of it and it's it's where I've had access to Barry, but access for, well, I have a gate back there, but I access when I'm putting like uh, uh, trash or leaves or uh, stuff for the city to pick up. And, and I asked Ron if, if it was clear that I would still have that access just to get through that gate so I can put, you know, stuff back there i don't i don't think ron is looking for access ingress and egress and i'm not sure i don't think the map says that to his uh pool um that's uh, I, I i think there may be a little bit of misunderstanding about this ingress egress um so that's that's about all i know and then I can add to it. Thank you. Um, anyone else on Zoom? Doesn't look like it. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, we'll close the public portion of this hearing. Uh, we'll bring Mr. Van Der Erve back up to uh, answer some questions.
Sounds like there's a lot of questions to answer. Yeah, and, and maybe just to provide some structure to this, let's start yeah. by what what is meant, um, if you know, by the the statement of providing access, and in, ingress and egress, rather to. Would you feel comfortable? Oh, sorry. Yes. There we go. So if you could address the ingress egress issue that's being raised by the by the residents on Barry. What it is is actually <coughs> behind my fence, and it's actually my property. There is a little cement rise that gives Charles access to go into his backyard. And it's been there for 30, 40, 50 years. Access with a car or access, access with a car? I mean, how big of an access is it? What are you talking about? It's probably seven feet across and it has around about 33 degree angle to it. You know, going up, literally if you tried to put a car in there, you'd bottom out your car, you know, for it. And all it is is a gateway for him to be able to get into his backyard. That's it. There's no alley there. There's no other house to get to. There's no connection to anything else, you know, for it. And it's strictly for him to be able to get, you know, through actually my property to have access to Barry just to put, you know, trash down there or to get into his backyard. That's it. Now, as budding up to that, the fence that is in existence around my pool is built there. It's literally about nine feet high. There's no access going out that fence at all. The only access to the pool area through the fence is on my property off of my driveway. And between my neighbor right behind me, there is a um, chain link fence that does have a gate to it and I keep that chained up and locked. So that way no one can go in and out. You know, so that is all the issues and I've got pictures I can show you. And also you should have a, an overhead picture of the whole area, I believe. You know, that shows my pool area, the fencing all around it, and also the wall between me and Charles that we're swapping the property. As for increasing traffic, there is no increase in traffic. It's the, actually the increased traffic on that road is because of all the families that actually have moved in. You know, there are kids now that when I moved into my house eight years ago, there are almost no kids behind us on Barry. Since then, almost all those houses have actually sold over and have kids in them now. And they play there, they have a good time, they do movie night, stuff like that, and they have fun. No for it. So the traffic is actually there, you know, because of them. You no, know, so as for other traffic that might come in there, most of the time from what I see is from people getting lost because of Google and they hit come down, they turn around and they head back out. As for me and Charles, I have no access to drive through there. There's fencing all in between. The same thing with Mr. Williams. You know, so that is, you know, the egress issue. You know, and same thing, like I said, for kids coming in, there's no access at all for the kids. The fencing is going all around eight to almost 10 foot high. So, so I guess in other words, nothing is changing with respect to access, ingress, egress to nothing that has either property. Nothing that's been there for, like I said, 30, 40 years. You know, it's, been, it's been the same way this whole time. Can I ask the audience if that addresses their concerns? What he's had to say? Does that address your concerns? No, it does not. Why are we changing the zoning? They have to. Um, <laughs> 320, I'm trying to think. I'm sorry. Yeah. 320 is Mr. Williams, correct? Correct. He is zoned NPD, Neighborhood Preservation District. Mr. Van Erk is zoned PR1, which is Planned Residential District 1. When they swap land, those little strips, one being added to his property, is a different zoning than his property. So that little strip has to be rezoned to tie into his, and the piece that Mr. Williams is getting has to be changed to NPD because you can't have two different zonings on your property. 
it, the lots themselves, the overall lots aren't being rezoned. It's just the land swap, the little strips of land that they're swapping has to match zoning. Um, in a PR, in a planned residential district, when that subdivision was laid out, they could have included a clubhouse, um, but it wasn't added as a part of it. It's not a part of it. They could have based on the zoning, but they, the developer didn't choose to do that. As far as I know. Yeah, there's no, there's, I have a shed. <laughs> no, what that work out of? That's it. Yeah. I mean, the only reason that we're here is simply because these are two different zones. If it wasn't for that fact, we, I wouldn't even be here. It's that simple. We're just swapping one little strip of property on one side for one little strip on the other side, just to have a wall, you know, taken care of. That's it. did not want to pull the ferry through. And so what they did was they offered all the property owners of those four properties, by divide it how you want. However you want, divide it up. We're, gonna, we're not gonna pull the street through. And that's how Bear became a cul-de-sac. Actually, the, at one time, the right-of-way went straight through to yeah. stare it. Yeah, so you know the city Actually, vacated it. The right way goes over my driveway. You know, it's that, it's that simple. Yeah. But when those properties were sold, Ed Doss, who used to own my property, he got the majority part. Everyone else split those little pieces up, and, they, and the city closed it off. Mr. Van Ert, there is no access. Well, I, I just wanted to mention you. this was when I walked the property today and spoke to you, I'll tell you the everyone here what I said to you what's in it for you so if I'm thinking like a resident I'm looking at this application and I'm thinking well why would he want to do this what's he what's gonna be his benefit to having this happen and it sounds like that's exactly everybody's thinking something's gonna happen here what's the what's the secret <laughs> what's what do we not know and end game is simply moving the wall Chuck and I have there's two walls there all we're doing is splitting one wall to him, one wall to me. So that way, 
It's very simple, privacy on the pool area, that's it. So it's just a zoning issue. It's, it's, a, not, that's a, it's, not, it's, it's not even zoning on the back. That's not even the else. issue. It's the tiny strip in the front yeah. that's being changed. It's nothing else. It's strictly <laughs> because it's two different zone properties. <laughs> and we found that out by mistake. Actually, you no. Know, Fred and Vicky found that out when, because all this was supposed to be taken care of a couple months ago, and they were like, uh, guess what? We have a little problem. We're two different zones because of two different age properties, and that's it. Can, can I ask the question again? Does that, does that, do you all feel better now about what you're yes. hearing? Does that change anything? I don't have no, a gate. No, no, ma'am. There's a, the only gate is the <laughs> gate that's there today. All right. What about when he sells it and the next person moves in and decides I'm going to use that gate? There I'm is no. Park my car on Berry Avenue and go into my gate and um, use my pool. Mm -hmm. My friends will park on Berry Avenue and go in my gate and use my pool. Y'all can't do that. Y'all can't see how small that circle is. There's. The gate doesn't open to the pool. There is no gate there. For, so Mr. Williams, who will no longer own that gate, can walk, it, technically, it's so he can legally walk across the grass and put his um, grass clipping or whatever he puts out there, uh, like he's been doing for the past 30 years. Which he does. And I do. Well, they can't legally do that. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we call the law. That, that's that's a that's a legal issue. That's that's not really what's in front of us right now. I, I appreciate your concern, but that's really more of an enforcement issue than it is a zoning issue. I'm getting between our two driveways is a little strip of land, grass. It's about like four feet wide. He's, I'm giving him a foot of that from the road up to, to my shed. And then he's giving me the equivalent on the back side, just so he can have the wall onto my property. Then my, uh, for my part, then his wall on his property. And do just a line up in between that. That's it. Yeah. Whose property will that go That's to? my property. That's my property. It currently is your property. Yeah, it's been my it's been my property. Right. Yeah. All all this is just formally saying, you know, same thing like anybody else, just like everybody else who is on an alley or whatever, they can open their gate and have access to it. Yeah. Same thing. It's been like that for over thirty years. Who pays that concrete? That concrete's been there probably since the forties. Well, whenever that whenever that road was done, it's been there. I've, I've been in, I've been yeah. I've been in the house. Okay, uh, yeah, we we um and, and I appreciate I appreciate we're trying to get more input because an explanation was provided about what ingress and egress meant. The, the public portion uh, of this hearing is closed, and we, we we thank you again for your additional input, but. I think at this point, if we could just limit it to questions by board members, uh, and then we can take a motion and vote on the case. So is there any more questions from uh, people on the commission? I do have one more question, if you don't mind me asking. Um, Vicki or Fred, would it be, uh, would, would it be um, an option to have the 316, uh, or what's the closer address to Oxford Circle is that 316 or 320 if you're looking at the two houses the house on the I'm left PR1 if PR1 would put in a petition to rezone to NPD is that an option 
to reason to, to rezone the entire lot. Yes, to NPD. Well, you couldn't do it tonight. We only advertised a four foot strip, and to rezone the entire lot, we'd have to back up to one and come forward again because it's a lot more area than we previously. Would that allay the concerns of the neighborhood? I'm just asking. I, I think their concern is access, and NPD Not doesn't have anything in it that says they can't go out their back either. You know what I'm saying? It, it isn't unlike, it's like Fred was saying, an alley that goes behind you that's a right of way, a city alley, and this is a city street. So it, I don't think it would make give them a different comfort level to um, for the whole lot because there's nothing in NPD that would that says you can't use both. <coughs> That part of the we could make that part of the recommendation. Okay, and it's better to process it. Okay, understand that. And I think that strip that's down there, that piece of concrete right now, is part of the city right away anyway. It probably is. It's yeah. only about five foot high, but like five by seven. And did you hear what she said about the gate and proffering and making that part of? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, the gate's not my gate. It's your neighbor's gate. Yeah. I got you. Okay. So yeah. But that means that that little chunk of property is my property. His gate's right there. And from what I, I've never seen him open it, number one. Number two, I think it's only about three feet. And wide that's what she's saying is could he proffer to keep that width so you couldn't drive a car through it? I mean, I, I personally don't care. No, but the thing is, he's on if, if he if he has to get into his backyard, he's got a big tree, and if it's got to be taken down or any work's got to be done, you know, then a truck will need to have access, you know, in that area, or let the fire department have to have access to go into the backyard. How is that going to happen? I don't know how the other yeah. the three twenty resident could proffer for Mr. Van Erb, who's the applicant. Technically, right. so. he, yeah. he, he's the one that's on Zoom, right? He's a, right okay. at 320. That's what I was thinking. I thought, and I was uh, confused with who had the gate. That was my that was my problem. Well, tell me again what it is that you're asking. If you would consider proffering to keep the gate at three feet width, so you couldn't drive a car through it. Um. The the, uh, the gate is is three feet now I don't have any intention to to uh, make it any wider I I will make it uh, or, or just say that I, and I think I had talked to Ron about this in the past I had a wider gate and I did have a tree company come in I mean this was probably 20 years ago a tree company had a truck that came in to take out a tree in my backyard um, but that gate right now, it's it's a wooden, uh, you know, then I took down the chain link fence on the full length of the back and across that little uh, stretch, which I think is about 14 feet, 13, 14 feet wide, but the, uh, the gate is only three feet wide. And when I built the wooden fence, that's all I wanted was something that I could open up, <coughs> take branches out, grass clippings, leaves, stuff like that. So that's, uh, that's all I would want is a three foot gate to get out and put trash out there. You know, I'm, it's I'm actually really very simple. Yeah. You don't have a gate. Would you proffer that you would not put a gate on the back of your property from to, to no? It's, I actually I can't even physically put a gate back there because the, pool the back the cement butts up to my back wall and I can't even physically get out of it if I was to try to put a okay. gate. So you would be willing to proffer that you wouldn't put a gate there, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it would be there. Okay. Um, any other questions? 
I would entertain a motion. Again, we're going to do this like we did earlier. We're going to do the resurvey first. Uh, I would entertain um, a motion to approve RS 21 04 03 to change the property lines. Motion to pass RS 21 04 03. Second. Okay, um, Mr. Wilson with the motion, Mr. Armstead with the second. You could call the roll, please. All right. Ms. Andress. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Armstead. Yes. Mr. Respento. Yes. Mr. Harwell. Yes. Mr. M Ms. Wilcutt. Yes. Mr. Cronteras. Yes. Mr. Broadhead. Yes. And Mr. Roberts. Yes. Uh, so your resurvey passes. Thank you. Um, the next, I would also entertain a motion to approve RZ21-04-04. That would change uh, the zoning uh, with, again, the proffer that um, Mr. Van Erd would not build a gate off the back of his property to, to the uh, to bury, the, to the circle at the end of bury. So moved. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wilson with the motion, Mr. Harwell with the second. All right. Ms. Andress. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Armstead. Yes. Mr. Respento. Yes. Mr. Harwell. Yes. Ms. Wilcott. Yes. Mr. Cronteras. Yes. Mr. Broadhead. Yes. And Mr. Roberts. Yes. And that will be recommended uh, on a nine to, uh, nine to zero vote to the uh, city council. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. For, for the benefit of the uh, citizens in the audience, as Mr. Roberts indicated, this will be going to the city council, the zoning part, not the subdivision, but the rezoning will go and there will be another public hearing before the city council and you will receive notification of that public hearing so again if you wanted to make any comments to the city council that would be your opportunity to do so thank you okay well that concludes our new business um I, as i mentioned as we we're coming out i was uh, going to raise one additional issue of old business it has nothing to do with what we've talked about tonight uh, specifically the uh, the case presented by the city uh, back in February of 2020 uh, to approve article 8 which would be a new article for the zoning ordinance uh, for a downtown uh, new, new downtown zoning plan um, back in February of 2020 um, Miss Henderson Susan Henderson from placemakers uh, presented the case on behalf of the city uh, we then opened it up to uh, public comment uh, that was held, I think we had about a two hour hearing, all of which is available on YouTube. Um, and then uh, we, uh, as, a, as a commission, uh, voted to table the case um, for further consideration and further discussion. Uh, we're now 14 months later, um, and uh, I don't believe any additional uh, discussion has been had, or if it has, I wasn't aware of it, but I thought that um, given our obligations as a commission to follow the, the requirements under Alabama, uh, the, under the Alabama code, specifically the provisions uh, that create the planning commission and give us our, uh, our obligations and duties um, and t tells us what we can and can't do and what we must do. Issues related to rezoning, the statute's very clear that we shall provide a report to the city council. Uh, we listen to the case we provide a report uh, we tabled the case we have not provided our report I, I believe we have an obligation to do so um, so in a, in a moment I'm going to ask for a motion to untable or remove from the table uh, the downtown rezoning plan uh, first heard in February uh, of 2020 uh, my thought would be that if it is removed from the table we would have uh, over the next month the members the newer members of the commission i think we have more newer members than old members at this point would have an opportunity to listen to the presentation by miss henderson uh, listen to the public comments um, and then uh, and based on that information plus the actual application uh, decide whether they are comfortable voting on that case we call we would add it to the agenda next month and then have a roll call vote uh, to approve or disapprove uh, recommend or not recommend to the city council 
uh, the new zoning plan as it has been modified uh, over the last couple of years. Um, so, and, and again, the, the public portion of that case has already been heard, so it would simply be uh, a voice vote, uh, roll call vote by the, by the commission members. So with that said, I would entertain a motion uh, for the, uh, the case, the downtown zoning case. It doesn't have a specific number, uh, but the one that was heard back in February of 2020 uh, to be removed from the table and brought back up for consideration by the commission. Mr. Roberts, I'd like to make a comment for public record prior to the motion. Sir. And that record or that that comment is the uh, I'll speak on behalf of a couple of the prior planning commission members who are no longer members and obviously not for you or for Mr. Crontyrus, but um, the uh, disgust and intent of the table at the time was for uh, adequate time for the city to have uh, conducted, paid for obviously, and con had a, uh, a traffic and parking study done after the operation uh, commenced of the new hotel development. The study has been completed and the hotel is only now operational. So um, in defense of the idea that we were waiting for something to be done uh, up until the recent um, re-election, I'm sorry, or turnover on the commission. Um, that was part of the motivation in that uh, delay. So I appreciate um, you hearing that. And thank you, Mr. Wilson. I think we also might have had a, a small pandemic in the meantime that might have slowed things <laughs> down as well. Um, <coughs> does anyone else want to speak to this before? Yeah, Mr. Chair. Your motion. I guess we'll for someone who is new, who doesn't have the history of being able to go through it, I may suggest that we um, have public hearing or have a comment session during the next meeting and then have the vote the following meeting. That way we have two months to, to, to get our hands around the actual information that people have said, what's, what's being offered. Just to I understand, you're suggesting that the city present its case again? Well, at least for the benefit of, at least for me, that I had to have the opportunity to see it. They, to, to understand it, but to me, having two months to do so as opposed to one month would give me more more time to understand the issues and also to hear from citizens that may have opinions about it one way or the other. Um, no, I appreciate that and thank you. And, and that certainly, I, I certainly understand um, the need for, especially the new members of the commission who weren't, you know, didn't hear this two or three times as it's come through a few times uh, to understand it. Um, I guess my response would be we, we do have a two hour public hearing with a, a fairly substantial presentation by placemakers and then comments from I'm, I'm guessing 30 or so members of the, of the public at that hearing. Um, and we, we'd actually concluded that part of the hearing in the case is actually right for a vote. The only reason the vote didn't happen is the case was tabled. Um, at least my suggestion would be take the time and we can provide the materials on the, the application itself, uh, the, the, the plan itself, what it would do to the zoning, uh, and then the, the, obviously the video of the meeting uh, would hopefully provide the information sufficient for people to make a determination. And our determination, our recommendation might be nine to zero against. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if that didn't provide enough information, my thought would be that if someone didn't feel comfortable voting that, that perhaps they could abstain. Um, but just reopening the, the case, I don't think is something that's on, on the table right now. Um, okay. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> the um, public hearing that you are referring to for them to watch, is that from November of 2019? Um, there, there, were, there were multiple hearings, okay. and I don't know. I know the last one was the first, of the first week of February of 2020. Okay. The, the reason I ask is because the changes that were made from the council in December, and I wanted to make sure that that was considered by everyone that's new, that, that we have crystallized in place um, 18th Street from 28th to Oxmoor and 29th from 18th to 19th. And so I just want to make sure if you go back and watch the November Planning Commission public hearing, that change was made after that. But Jennifer, we don't have that. We didn't start recording planning commissions back then and we did record the February one okay. uh, because we knew okay. it was a special one okay. but we do not have a recording of that November planning commission. No that's a good that's I wanted to make sure the one you were referring to was the I didn't I did not remember that you had a public hearing in February so that, I just wanted to make right. sure. So yeah we had yeah we had a, a two-hour public hearing and Ms. Henderson at that time was able to explain 
uh, and give some context to all the changes that have been made, some of, some of which based on uh, discussions with, with you know, people impacted the stakeholders in downtown, uh, the changes to, to limit you know, mixed use to certain areas and, not, and not, not impact 18th Street, 29th Street, all that was laid out by Ms. Henderson uh, okay, in, the, in the February 2020 meeting. I just wanted to confirm that. I, was, I did not remember that there was a two hour, uh, I, I attended the one in November and I did not remember there being one in February. Obviously I wasn't on the plan for the time, but I'm glad to hear that, thank you. Perfect. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have a question. Uh, by uh, untabling this, wh what are we trying to accomplish? Uh, Mr. Contreras, the uh, untabling this, the, the purpose of that would be to allow the Planning Commission to fulfill its statutory obligation, which is to make a recommendation or report to the City Council on this case. Um, and I, I didn't say this earlier, but it, part of my concern is, uh, is precedential. Um, I don't think we as a body, uh, especially on cases in which we're a recommending body, not a, not a final decision-making body, uh, that it's a bad precedent for us to, and I'm not saying this is exactly what happened here, but, uh, but to, to table things we don't want to get to the City Council for whatever reason. We, we have an obligation, the statute says we shall make a report um, and recommendation to the City Council. Um, and, and that is, uh, and, and frankly, I think tabling it for further discussion might have been okay. I just, I think we've gotten to the point now where we have an obligation, uh, a statutory obligation, a legal obligation to do something on this case, whether it's positive or negative. Well, you know, the tabling uh, issues have been resolved in order for us to be uh, untabling it. Well, um, and we can go back and watch the tape that there are discussions there were a lot of different reasons my, from my understanding one of the one of them was concerned about traffic uh but ultimately my well, argument, was, my, was my, traffic was the height the height was another one besides the traffic <coughs> okay but but the the actual plan itself had been modified and the, and what we were going to vote on was the plan as modified after going to the city council after meetings with the public after making some significant, I believe, concessions and changes to the original plan uh, to accommodate and assuage concerns uh, from, the, from the business owners and from the property owners, uh, we were then presented with a plan that we were to, to recommend or not recommend. Um, so uh, again, the things you're describing, concerns about height, concerns about traffic, those might be per perfectly valid reasons for you to vote against it or recommend you have your vote recommending that the plan not be approved uh, i don't think there are appropriate reasons for us not to fulfill our statutory obligation to actually make a recommendation mr roberts i think that might be that mr Crontyris is speaking specifically to the hotel and that's not a question right now either we're talking about the tabled item which is the the rezone the 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 um broad rezoning of downtown, not anything specific to the hotel, correct? I mean, that's what we're, we're it is inclusive of the rezoning. I mean, but, the hotel is located in the zoning, right. in the area impacted by the zoning, right. but the zoning plan has no impact on the hotel. This doesn't have anything to do with that, the operation that, of, that, of the that hotel. That cake is right. pretty much cooked yes, at sir. point. Well, you know, Mr. Chairman, in my opinion, to untable this and present it back to the city council, there has to be some legitimate legal reason to untable it. And as far as I understand from the way you're presenting this, you know, you're just asking to untable it, you know, with no reason, no, you know, no, nothing. And, uh, you, know, you know, in my opinion, uh, you know, I think there needs to be more discussion about uh, what's the reasons to untable it, and uh, and then decide whether it has to be uh, changed and go back to the city council, because when it's going to go back to the city council, it's going to approve what we disapprove. Uh, uh, thank you. you know, that, that, that's that's my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Contreras. I think um, I, I think the the point, I guess, the underlying point or overarching point is that. Tabling this indefinitely, I believe, is a violation of our obligations. We're acting outside of our statutory authority to table it 
with, with no end game, with no end in sight. Uh, we're 14 months later, again, we've had, we've had a lot of things happen. We've had a global pandemic. We've had Zoom hearings. We've continued to do our business, though. Uh, and ultimately, um, you've cited reasons you don't believe it should be untabled, and that's certainly your right to vote that way if, if there is a motion made. Um, no, I, I, don't, I, I don't say that it's not supposed to be untabled. I'm saying that what are the reasons to be untabled? If the reasons to untable are valid and legitimate, you know, there is no problem. I don't have no problem. But just to say we will untable it, you know, I, I don't think that's right. Well, thank you, Mr. Contreras. I, I, you know, I, I don't want to okay. re well, re re all right. repeat that's fine. Too, too much. I, I, you know, I think I've stated, at least for, in my view, in making this request, uh, the reasons why I, I believe this is something that should be considered and taken off the table. Um, and certainly reasonable minds can disagree on that point. Um, okay. And with that said, I would entertain a motion uh, to remove from the table uh, the downtown rezoning uh, case last heard in February of 2020. So moved. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. We have a motion from Ms. Andrus uh, and a second from Mr. Respento. All the room. Okay, Miss Andrus. Yes. Mr. Wilson. No. Mr. Armstead. Yes. Mr. Respento. Yes. Mr. Harwell. Yes. Miss Wilcutt. Yes. Mr. Cronteras. No. Mr. Broadhead. Yes. And Mr. Roberts. Uh, yes. So um, that case is untabled uh, we'll, by a vote of seven to two. Seven to two. Seven to two. Uh, we'll be on the agenda next month um, for a, for a vote. Mr. Chairman, I, I have a, I have one more question. Uh, you know, it may not be. I don't know what's the right word. It may not be appropriate, but how can the new members of the Planning Commission? understand what was the reason of the table in, in vote in favor of one table uh, and thank you again mr contreras i we have a two-hour video that i will make available that's on the city website uh that that, uh, that captures the entire meeting from you know, uh, from february of 2020 including Ms. henderson's presentation <coughs> um the public comment and then the discussion by the commission members that ultimately led to the vote that we uh, to, to table the case. So I think that should provide sufficient information uh, for the members, the new members of the commission, to understand uh, at least understand the reasons why that vote went the way it did, or the reasons why the proponents of tabling it uh, voted the way they did. So I think, I think that information is available. Should we wait for them to review that before they can vote tonight? Well, that, that is again. Point of order has been passed. Okay, yeah, it's it's. Uh, yeah, we, we have passed it. Uh, it's going to be on the agenda next month. Uh, they'll have a month to review the same information uh, we were privy to um, 14 months ago, and it'll be again on the agenda uh, for us to, to vote on uh, next month. And um, I have nothing further unless someone else has something. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Sorry, I was talking to. Okay, so Mr. <laughs> Who made the motion? To? Mr. Harwell made the motion. Ms. Wilcott, I believe, made this second. Okay. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. We're adjourned.